Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the double x problem from warm-up 2 in Java. Given a string, return true if the first instance of an x in the string is immediately followed by another. So we look here, we see a x x b b, and that returns true because the first x there has an x right after it. In this case, we see that's false because there's no second x in the case, and in this case, it's true. Now what's really important with this press question is, when can I stop? What do I mean by that? Um, when you're developing a general algorithm, one of the things that's really important is to identify when can you stop and report back the result. And in this case, as soon as I figure out, as soon as I find that first x, I can do that check and then return whether it's true or not. I don't have to check the entire string. But if I do make it through the entire string, I'm going to return false, because that means I haven't found anything. So what I'm going to do here is essentially I'm going to write a loop. i equals 0, i is less than str.length, i is equal to i plus 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check each character. So I'm going to say if str.charat i, is that an x? And if that's an x now, what I need to do is I need to then check the next character. So I'm going to say if str.char at i plus 1 is equivalent to x. And if that next character is an x, I return true. Otherwise, I return false. Because remember, it says given a string return true if the first instance of x in the string immediately followed by another x. So if I hit go now, it kind of works, but I get this index out of bounds. And this is a really important idea. Why does it get index out of bounds? Well, it gets an index out of bounds, notice in this case, where the x is the very last value. But I don't get an index out of bounds. Oh, well, they don't have an example here to look at. So what's happening here is that because I'm checking i and then I'm checking i plus 1, the problem is if I'm looking at the last character in the string, I'm going to, that's where that index out of bounds is. So let's just write this down here. So if I take this case here, or let's just make one up. If I go, I don't know, A, B, C, D, X. So this has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So when I hit I equal to 4, it says, okay, are you an X? And the answer is true. And then I check the next one, and that's where my index out of bounds error comes from. Now, really, do I need to even check that last character? And the answer is no, because if I make it to the last character, there's nothing after it. So what I want to do is I'm going to change my loop to make it to the second last character by putting minus 1 there. And now I hit go, and off it goes. Now, let's just tighten up a couple things. See here how I have this if statement. If this is true, it returns true, otherwise it returns false. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that to a straight return statement. And essentially, because the Boolean true returns true and the Boolean false returns false, I'm just going to do that. Now I'll hit go. Oh, I have an extra brace. And I can even clean this up a little bit more. I can get rid of all those braces because in Java, the rule is if you have one, I'll just get rid of this comment as well. If you have one line of code inside a for loop or one line of code inside an if statement, you don't need braces. So this if statement only has a single line of code here, so I don't need braces, and because this if statement sits inside this for loop, no need for braces. Nice thing to be aware of, but again, if you're a beginning programmer, you really should be putting braces in there because they're really helpful to keep track of things. Have a great day!